John Wick Chapter 4, no spoilers. Subscribe now. Let's do it. John Wick is still alive and a very popular target among his colleagues in the fourth installment of the popular neo-noir action series. It's the first John Wick movie in four years, the longest gap between John Wick films, and takes place between Japan, New York, and primarily Paris. Bill Skarsgård plays a French high-ranking member of the table and serves as the primary foe to Keanu Reeves' titular character. As of this recording, it has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes with a runtime of 2 hours and 49 minutes, making it the longest John Wick movie. For two reasons, Pete, I think people are going to love this movie. One, it's just been a while since we've had a John Wick movie and since we've seen one. Two, this movie rocks. I couldn't believe as it was progressing that I thought, this is the second best John Wick movie. And about two minutes later, I realized, and we discussed after, this was the best John Wick movie. I think it's the best John Wick movie, and I don't think that it's... I I, I mean, I'm always going to hold some, some love and uh, esteem for John Wick 1 for introducing us to the franchise. I think this clears one and the rest of them by a pretty healthy margin. I just think that there are so many great things that this movie does. Number one, it plays the hits. All of the things that you love about the John Wick franchise are in here. One of its biggest strengths is that it has other characters that you care about beyond John Wick. This is the strongest movie in terms of having strong secondary characters. And this is probably the... I would say it, it it might have it's the longest, but I would say that it has the the least amount of fat to it than yes, any of the other movies. There is not one dull moment in this. You mentioned the other characters, and again, wow, well, this is a spoiler free thing. So they're like we're gonna mention that like if we say John Wick's wife is dead, you can't get mad at that. But we're really not going to spoil major plot things. Uh, Three main adversaries in this movie, Kane, a blind assassin played by Donnie Yen, Mr. Nobody played by Shamir Anderson, and Vincent de Gramont played by Bill Skarsgård. All these characters rock, especially Kane and Mr. Nobody. Yeah, it, but the, all three of those rock, but there are even like secondary villains that have a lot of personality and are great. So uh, like the villains and the secondary villains slash like henchmen mm -hmm. are awesome. It has essentially the same plot as John Wick 3, which I think after John Wick 2 happens, I think every movie after that probably will have a somewhat similar plot, which is he's excommunicated, he's on the run, people are trying to get him, whereas the first two are more, he's either forced to do a job or he's forced to do something he didn't want to have to do sort yeah. of thing, uh, which just happens in the first one, may contain spoilers, of John Wick 1. This has essentially the same plot as John Wick 3, but the story is so much better. And you mentioned the characters. That's a big part of it. But it does things and brings back things from other John Wick movies in major parts of the John Wick universe, such as dogs, the way that things are presented in very close proximity. Like, it's, it's the smartest John Wick movie. I and I know that John Wick isn't there to be super smart, but... Maybe it's because it's made by the same people that have been making it the whole way. There's so much care that's put into this, whereas I think maybe in the third one, they were thinking like, how can we be creative? What else can we bring in where this was just like, how can we do John Wick as well as we well, do John Wick? So I think that this movie does so many things so much better than the third movie because the third movie I thought started off really strong but then lost a ton of steam down the second half. Like once Halle Berry is introduced and like – it's just like a lot of the same repetitive stuff and it's not that creative. It felt like the, how do we get John wick to work with somebody in, in John wick three and like they pair him up with Halle Berry and it, it, it kind of lost me a little bit. This one, it starts off really well, but it only picks up steam, which it, it eliminates the runtime as a, a point of issue in this movie because it only gains steam as you go on. There's no real downtime they find a way to make John Wick work with other characters in a way that's different with each character that he works with and brings like its own unique flavor to it. Uh, and I just think that it does so many things like it plays the hits, but it plays them in a way that feels new. Yeah. And you, you're right about the the length of it. It's longest John Wick movie, but it only gets better as it goes on. And this 
movie presents each challenge for John Wick as almost like mini games, where by the time you're late in the movie, you know, all right, each time he arrives at one of these problems, this is the next 15, 20 minutes of the movie, and this is all it's going to be, and the only thing that I'm thinking about isn't, oh, well, what's going to happen about this character who's after him or whatever? That doesn't matter to you, and that doesn't matter to John Wick. You live in the moment. Exactly. A perfect way of putting it. This movie lives in the moment so, so well. And you're right, there is some of the, uh, from John Wick 1, where he'll see someone who's either trying to kill him or an adversary or some sort of colleague, and there's the sort of like, oh, hi, Adrian Palicki. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to come for me later in the movie, but that's not what's happening right no. now. And th- that's his relationship with, I won't name the characters because I'm really trying to keep this spoiler free, but there are a-, a lot of these guys that you know, all right, they're all going to cross paths. They're all going to meet each other, and they're going to get in each other's way. The scenes they do with each other are excellent and again if you like john wick one for the dog stuff you'll like how dogs are tied into this movie if you love how things are shot so close and tight with great care you will love this movie i want to squeeze this in because no one's going to do any sort of content on it and i tweeted about it and i knew i was like no one's going to get this maybe pete will have you ever noticed the importance of coffee in the john wick movies no everything is done not everything, but so much stuff happens around the pouring of coffee and the serving of coffee, and each character has their coffee and they take it a certain way. Uh, and like, there's now that I'm thinking I, about I, it, yes, you could think to the beginning of John Wick Two when the guy pays him the visit and he comes in and he's gonna make him uh, do the task he doesn't want to do. He comes in, he's a cafe, sure, and he goes to the coffee machine and everything. This has a big, this has a couple of big coffee scenes. And it may not be coffee, though. It could be tea. Uh, I don't think so. I, I know which one you're thinking of. I'm pretty sure that was coffee. Okay. But even if it wasn't a hot beverage, and if it were tea, then that would be more of like a geographical thing because uh, they did, the John Wick universe does go to London or which, to Japan where like tea might be more customary than coffee. I'm glad you bring that up because there is a lot of uh continent hopping yeah happening in this movie which is funny just based off of like what you really know about john wick is that everybody wants to kill him yes but yet he is allowed to internationally travel with ease yeah that's (laughs) oh i think i know i think no spoilers i think lawrence fishburne maybe helps him with that right could be fair yes he's like Um, yeah jump down here but you mentioned the way that things are shot. Uh, part of the reason why you are allowed to live in the moment so much in this movie is because everything is shot so spectacularly well. Uh, everything looks great. This this has one of the best sequences. Um, I don't know if you know which one I'm talking about. It's one of two. It's is it the the indoor version of it or the outdoor the, the version? The indoor of it? version. Yes, of the that was so, There's like yes. an overhead shot of a fight scene inside of a house and it is incredible they take the they literally blow the roof off the the place and shoot it as though there is no seal down yeah Yeah. and like you're looking at like the blueprint of the house while he moves through rooms it's incredible and there were several times in the movie i would highly recommend watching it in theaters because it's a great theater experience one, because it's a lot of action and a lot of big action, so you want to see it on the biggest screen possible. But number two, the, the audience element of watching a John Wick movie cannot be overstated, like the importance of it, because you people are having the best time. And like we saw it at an at a early screening, and there were several times where people were just laughing at funny lines or just like laughing at like the slapstick of it mm-hmm. in some of the, the action scenes. And there were like audible gasps at just like the way that things were shot. And like, I was giddy. Yes. It's just an experience that is best viewed inside a theater. Yes. This is slightly dark, but after the movie, I was thinking, I can't remember the last time I grinned for five straight minutes, let alone what a hundred seventy or something like that. Yeah. It was while people are just getting like murdered relentlessly on yeah. screen. Yeah. And you like... mentioned the laughs. The first half of this movie, I did take note that this was probably the least funny of the John Wick movies, and then as it went on, there ended up being some more actual funny lines, but this movie I think places more of an importance on 
uh, amusing you in other ways than straight up making you laugh. And it doesn't have as many of the, like what I love about John Wick 2 is that a lot of the laughs just straight up come from the fight scenes. Yes. Like yeah. this is a silly looking fight scene, yes. but it's realistic and like they're trying to kill each other. This movie doesn't lean into the laughs as much as the other ones, um, but that, that, that didn't take away from it. No, really. because I mean, they replaced the laughs with like, like, cool shit you're like, right they, they went for gasps. super cool and uh like creative stuff that you don't see coming and also i think that this is the weakest john wick movie like in terms of john wick himself like keanu reeves doesn't do a lot of heavy lifting in this movie outside of the action stuff well i mean it, a big it part of it very is, minimal dialogue and, and this goes to why i like this so much more than john wick 3 despite its similar plot it places higher stakes on other characters. Yes. So you are right. It's it's not just even about John Wick. There's consequences from John Wick 3 that are being applied to a lot of beloved characters. So like John Wick himself doesn't move the plot forward in this movie. Mm -hmm. The other characters do. So like Bill Skarsgård yeah, I was gonna say is, the table am does. is amazing. He is amazing awesome in this movie all of, like we said all the secondary characters are really good and they're they're good characters but they're also very good at, at like being utilized to push things forward so that like they are a vehicle for john wick to do another thing all right positives of john wick chapter four say the story the supporting characters not a dull moment in this entire thing. The visuals. Visuals, really, really well shot. That's always going to be a hallmark of uh, John Wick movies. Uh, negatives, I, I would say the fight sequences have probably plateaued, which it, but that isn't, it's a negative, but it's not, a, it doesn't detract from the movie. Uh, not the funniest John Wick movie, but again, uh, not a huge deal. Uh, we'll point it out before anybody else does. This is the Saturdays are for the boys edition of John Wick. Uh, no women in major roles at all. Letterboxed, I give it uh, four and a half stars out of five, Peter. I gave it four and a half as well. John Wick 4, what a movie. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And check out the description below where we've got links for the podcast and the Patreon. Bye-bye.